Okay, the last four Mishnah. This is a very complex uh, Mishnah, even though it's short. God knows everything. God sees everything from ahead of time. And yet we have Bechirach of We have Rashut. We have the ability to, we were given the ability to choose. We have free free choice, free, uh, free um, will. And yet God knows what we're going to do. And that is a conundrum. That is a, a, a very famous philosophical problem <clears throat> that no one can really properly explain. The Rambam says no one can really properly understand it, and therefore we can't solve it. Um, it is simply um, impossible for someone in our realm to understand what it means to live above time. God doesn't have time. He doesn't have a past or a present, or a future, we live in time, and therefore the fact that he can know ahead of time what we're going to do, he sees it, but yet we have free choice, we believe both, that God sees everything, and that we have free choice, and we don't fully understand how to solve that. With the two how long we go, and people do good, and God judges the world properly and well, he gives them a good judgment and, and the reward for doing good. With two Olam Yidon, Akol Ofirov HaMaseh, and everything is judged based on doing more and more good. The world is judged properly. We know that we have free will because there's reward and punishment. God gives reward to those who do good, and he gives great reward to the world if everyone does good, or if most people do good. Um, and that's part of free choice, part of free will. Um, the next Mishnah talks more about God's relationship to everything. We have it similar to an earlier Mishnah we had that everything we have comes from God. Everything is given to us on loan, basically, from God. God lends it to us. <clears throat> and God sort of covers everything that's everyone that's alive, everyone that's here. God uh, has everything covered. He's, he's basically watching over us. And everything we have is is from God, is borrowed from God, so to speak. Hachanut Petuchah, God has a store open. Hachem Vani, which is God, the storekeeper. Uh, Makif, he gives, uh, he, he, he sells on credit. So I don't have money right now. He he, he uh, keeps the store, so to speak, that I owe him. I owe him because I did something wrong, or I owe him because I, I still need to do a mitzvah. These are all in the relationship with God. He is like the storekeeper, keeping store, on what we're doing, why we're doing, and the Pinchas Pinchas Patuah, and his his ledger, his book that he writes everything down is always open. Vayat Kotevet, and he writes everything down, everything we do, and he knows what reward and punishment we deserve. And if you need to borrow from God, if you need to um, uh, to, to um, do something in which you owe God, meaning you did something wrong, maybe, and you owe Him uh, tshuva. Or you did something right, and you sort of used something that wasn't uh, yours. Anyway, in any way, if you're using this world, you're sort of borrowing, borrowing from God, and God's willing to lend. But sometimes there's payback time. And he has people uh, um, that whose job it is to give back what uh, what we take. Tadir Every day, basically, there's reward and punishment. Just another word for. Reward and punishment. God pays us back, whether it's reward or punishment. We don't always know that he's rewarding us. We don't always know that he's punishing us. But we believe that everything in this world is ultimately either a reward or a punishment. And they know exactly what they're doing. God knows how to call the shots. And he knows when to give a reward and when to give a punishment. And that God's judgment is always true. Everything's setting us up for Olam Haba, that ultimate Seuda, that ultimate meal where we partake of God's glory. And it's all setting us up to enjoy Olam Haba, both the reward and the punishment. Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, from there, in Main Torah, in their Heretz, in their Heretz, in Torah. Their Heretz can be viewed as two types of things. It could be a proper behavior, like, oh my God, you have no Dara Haaretz. You don't know how to act morally. If you don't have Torah, if you don't know Torah, you're not acting properly. That doesn't mean that someone who's not religious is not moral. He could be moral. But the Torah is our guide and what morality is. And the whole world is guided by the Torah that God gave us in terms of morality. Much of our morality, we take it for granted, but it came from the Torah. If there was no Torah, there wouldn't be proper 
Torah has to be proper morality. If you don't have morality, you also don't have Torah. If you're a person who's a, call yourself a religious person, but you're not nice to people, then you don't really have Torah. You think you have Torah, but if you don't have Derek Haritz, you don't have Torah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the other way. Derek Haritz could also mean a job or a way to have a livelihood. If I don't have Torah, my livelihood is at risk. If I don't have Torah, I don't have a livelihood, a way to earn money. It, it doesn't mean, again, that someone that religious doesn't have money. Don't take it literally. But it means that God watches over us in terms of everything we have. Uh, if we're closer to God and we have Torah and keep Torah, and he doesn't if we don't. We need their adherence and Torah. But if you don't have a way of supporting your family, don't tell me you have Torah. You're not supporting your family. That's a basic responsibility that everyone has as a father, as a mother, as a leader of a family. And if you don't do that, you don't really have Torah either. If you don't have proper Torah knowledge, you don't really understand what it means to have fear or awe of God. And if you don't have fear or awe of God, then your Torah knowledge is not worth much either. And Bina are two kinds of knowledge. Uh, <coughs> Bina, as opposed to just knowing something, Bina is the ability to deduce. If I know A, I could figure out that B is also true from A, or I could figure out B from knowing A. That's called Bina. Understand, I'm, I can be able to infer one thing from another. I'm able to deduce. If I don't have that level of knowledge, I don't have Dat either. Dat is a higher level of knowledge, in which comes from experience. I have to know things, and then I have to be able to deduce things. It's a higher level thinking skill. And then I have to have Dat. I have to be able to incorporate my knowledge into my life and use my life experience to understand my knowledge better. So, But if you don't have Bina, if you don't have the ability to deduce things, you don't really ever get to Dat. And if you don't have Dat, if you don't have a way of applying your knowledge in the world and uh, your life experience to your knowledge, you don't really have Bina either because you're not using it properly. You mean Kemach and Torah, you mean Torah and Kemach. That's really similar to what we were saying earlier uh, kemach is, is literally flour, but if I don't have a way of, of uh, earning money for my family, I don't. I will not keep my Torah because I won't be able to sustain my family. And if I don't have Torah, I will also not be able to sustain my family monetarily. God looks out for those who keep Torah. More. Again, it's not. Do not take it literally. Do not think it's saying I won't have money if I don't keep Torah. I will have money. God watches over us more when we keep Torah. If someone has Torah knowledge, but he is he has much more Torah knowledge than he follows Maasim Tovim, then that's not a good thing. What's he like? He's like a tree that has a lot of branches, a lot of leaves, but very little roots. The Shorashim. And wind comes and knocks that tree right over. It's not stable. Having Torah knowledge. Without having ma'asim tovim is not a stable existence religiously. And he begins a pasuk. But if you have good actions and you treat people nicely, and you do mitzvot, both mitzvot ben adam ba'ashem and mitzvot ben adam chaviro, if that's greater than your chokmah, the mahudo man, he's like a different kind of tree. Shan nafav me'atim has very few branches, very few leaves, but shorashav me'atim has a lot of very deep roots. And any wind that comes, kol afil kol rachav olam baot, you know shavot baot ein lezimot alei, will never be able to move him. He will be very stable. He brings it pasuk. And finally, Rabbi Lozer ben Chizma, Omer Kinya nivit chenida hein hein gufei halachot kinim. I'm sorry, I have to read again. Kinim is is a masechet in in. In Shas, in, in Shisha Sidre Mishnah, which is very intricate, it has to do with Tuma and Tahara, it has to do with uh, birds and their nests, and it's it's very, very complicated and very intricate. So to Nida, the opening of Nida, meaning the the details of the beginning of learning, Hilchot Nida and Masecha Nida, is very intricate. And those kinds of very difficult halachot, Hein Hein Gufei Halachot, it's really the, if you if you are willing to deal in such difficult halachot, then you really got the Torah and you'll be fine. Uh, however, it's kufo to gematria. If you just deal in dates and you say, oh, this date is like an omen to this or a, 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 a siman to that, and this is going to happen on this day, and you're going to predict the future, or you use gematria, this letter and that letter a equals ten, and ten is a beautiful idea. Those kinds of things are parparut. Those are like dessert. They're okay, they're cute, 
But that's not what Torah is really a book about. Torah is about the intricate uh, details of knowledge.